Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and on your screen, the 75th anniversary models of the Omega Seamaster. As you all know, Omega just launched eight watches. Seven of them are on your screen to celebrate its 75th anniversary. 1948 was the date when they initially launched that iconic watch. So we got all of them except the Blobrov. And this video now, it is a bit special in the sense different to other videos. To be able to choose your specific watch, the video is separated through chapters. So you will be able to click on your favorite model and then you will directly be linked to the section where I do show you your favorite watch. You choose which one you want to get closer to, either by choosing the chapters of our video. If you want to watch all of them, you're very welcome. I will first pick the two Aquaterra watches and present you the 38 mm and the 41 mm Aquaterra. So both Aquaterra watches will be shown in the first chapter. The second chapter is the World Timer. Then the fourth chapter will be about the Seamaster 300. The fifth chapter about the Diver 300. Next one will be the Planet Ocean. Planet Ocean. And yes, last but not least, the legendary Ultra Deep. And the legendary Ultra Deep hides a secret on its dial. And to discover the secret, you will have to watch the chapter of the ultra deep so you choose enjoy we will start right away with the aquaterra watches both waterproof up to 150 meters as the world timer is and later we will dive a little bit deeper 300 meters with the two divers 600 and then 6000 meters don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications Chapter number one, two Aquaterra offerings coming from Omega, 38 mm, 41 mm. We will start with the small one and as you see on your screen, there is nothing moving. This does not mean that the watches don't have a functioning movement. Of course they do, but I stopped them. You see here the crown. I've been pulling out the crown in the second position. The first thing we can clearly see Hacking seconds apply for both of the watches. You have been seeing the 41 millimeter with a rubber strap. And if you're asking yourself, can I get the 38 millimeter as well on a rubber strap? I have to say no. The 38 millimeter will only be offered on the stainless steel bracelet. I will now push in the crown. You see the central second hand starts to swipe over the dial again. It's a three and a half hertz movement, 25,200 semi-oscillations, metas, certified coaxial escapement, and this does apply for all of them. Not the frequency, but they're all metas certified watches. They do all have an official marking on the dial. They are coaxial escapement and a master chronometer. So 38 millimeter is the diameter of the watch, the thickness, the thickness is 12.26, 12.26 millimeter. And the so-called log to log distance, distance from one log end to the other log end is 45.1 millimeter. The 38 millimeter Aquaterra features a date indication at six o'clock. Yep, a little bit small, I would say. So if you're wearing glasses, this could be a little bit difficult to read the date, but that's how it is. It is, and this is now the beautiful thing, a gradient blue summer dial or a summer blue 
gradient dial, however you want to put it. How do they make those? It's PBD, sunbrushed, gradient varnished, and lacquered. And if you play around in light a little bit, as I'm doing it, actually, you can nicely see different effects, how the light is reflecting back from these beautifully done blue dials. The Aquaterra features a sapphire crystal that has an anti-reflective treatment on both sides. You can nicely observe the beautiful dial. On the back side, yes, there is no see-through case back that applies also to all these watches. But <laughs> what can we see? It's a screw-in, polished, brushed, wave-edged design, stamped a commemorative medallion engraved with Seamaster since 1948. And who do we see on the backside? Yes, Neptune, prominently shown on all these watches with that medallion. And the view on the movements is unfortunately not possible. Once again, from the side with the Omega logo stamped in on the crown. Also, from this side, there is no box sapphire crystal on the simple Aquaterra watch. There is a folding clasp with no length adjustment, so you have to unscrew one of the links, take out one of the links, to adjust the length correctly but there is no micro length adjustment available just in case you need to do some adjustments during the day that is in this case not possible the tapering yet yeah, it is tapering a little bit from 19 in between the locks down to 17 in the folding clasp with the prominently applied omega logo on it so 19 to 17 millimeter in Austria, where I live, this Aquaterra is sold for 7,500 euro, including 20% VAT. These are Austrian prices, so 20% VAT included. And as I said in the beginning of the video, this watch can only be bought with the stainless steel bracelet. On your screen now, the 41 millimeter Aqua Terra watch. The same here, it says screw down crown. I have been pulling out the crown in the second position to make the watch smile for you. Then you see that the central second hand stops. Now I will push back in the crown and also screw down the crown, waterproof up to 150 meters. You see that the central second hand now swipes over the dial. Same thing here, three and a half hertz. So 25,200 semi-oscillations. The difference, what is the main difference? One of the major differences in between the calibers, the 8,800 that is in the 38 millimeter watch here is the caliber 8,900. The major and for me, very important difference is this. Look, in the first position, you can independently set the hours without stopping the watch. This is not possible with the 38 millimeters. Once you want to do any settings, you need to pull out the crown in the second position. Otherwise, you can't. First position is winding. Then it is theoretically the second position. And then we could talk about the third position when I pull completely out. But it is in the first setting position and in the first setting position what I do is I can independently set the hour and this is very useful when you are traveling because you mostly don't change the minute settings but only the hour settings and for instance you would arrive to New York compared to our time zone here in Vienna six hours of difference so you just unscrew you pull out the crown and you go back six hours one two three four five and six that's all you push back, you screw in, and the watch is set, and you didn't lose correct time. And this is pretty important because this is a master chronometer, accurate from zero to plus five seconds. So mostly the watch you are wearing is more accurate than any announcements any flight attendant will make in an airplane. Aquaterra 41 millimeters. I said it before. What is the thickness of this watch? The thickness is 13.2 millimeter, 13.2. 
and the so-called log to log distance, so from one log end to the other log end, is 48, 48 millimeter. This aqua terra can be worn either with the nice rubber strip you see here with the texture on it, stitching, perfectly matching, everything is matching here, there is nothing wrong. You can wear it either with this rubber strip with its folding clasp or with a bracelet and both bracelet and the rubber strap are tapering. In between the lugs we do have 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter and in the folding clasp we do have 18 millimeter. So from 20 to 18 and this applies either for the bracelet or the rubber strap. Let me show you this gradient. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, this color is gradient summer blue. The finishing is PVD once again, sunbrushed, gradient, varnished with horizontal teak pattern. You do see the teak patterns reminding you of very nice sailing boats. If you want to do some date changes, yeah, I'm, I'm really now um, having my little session with the crown here. Unscrewing it, pulling it out, uh, pushing it back, screwing <laughs> Okay, private session with the crown. I forgot to show you this. Look. Uh, we are unscrewing the crown, we're getting in a position. So if you want to do any date changes, um, you will have to continue doing what I am doing. You see that you have to do two turns around the dial with the hour hand until the date is changing and you could nicely see how the date changed from the 8. I always set to the 8 lucky numbers to the 11th and if you want to go back same applies you can go back I am now on the 10th once again and then here is the 9th and when I go back again 24 hours yes now we are back on the 8th and this is morning once again morning 10 past 10. No see-through case back here as well. On the front side, yes, the sapphire crystal has an anti-reflective treatment on both sides, but there is none on the back side, so you will again see Neptune perfectly aligned, so it must be without that it is mentioned here, a Naiad lock, a so-called Naiad lock by Omega. This Naiad lock always enables the watchmaker when he's closing the case back to align it correctly. And imagine how silly this medallion would look if it would be misaligned. So this is really something I want to point out. Perfectly done, Omega. Congratulations. Attention to details with Omega watches is always thrilling. I love it. Important also to say, not for sale. All the watches I'm showing in the video are not for sale. They are from a traveling collection of Omega. Meant to be shown to clients, to the retail, and to some of the journalists, and I'm happy that I have them. When we are looking at the watch from the backside, I called them the last time in the last video where I showed them, this was the video about the Aquaterra World Timer that is online on Watch Advisor on YouTube. Here on the inner side, a wave-like structure. I call those speed bumps, and why are these little speed bumps, or why is this structure there. Yes, it should enable some air to flow in between your skin and the rubber to avoid too much sweating. Beautiful, beautiful, I have to say. Gradient summer blue. <sighs> Wonderful. So, the watch you see on your screen now actually is sold in Austria for 6,900 euro. Why is this watch cheaper than the 48 millimeter? Yes, because it features a rubber strap. Of course, I don't have the price here for the watch, including the bracelet, but I assume it's about 1,000 or 1,500 euros more. So this is the version with the rubber strap, 41 millimeter. This is the version in 38 millimeter, only coming with a bracelet, whilst the version in 41 millimeter can also be bought either with the rubber strap or the bracelet or both yes as you wish maybe someone asked already is are these watches limited no they aren't but how long will they be probably sold by omega normally and this is what i learned uh, without that they officially ever confirmed they probably will produce these for a year maximum three years 
So I expect that this will be a one-time shot for one year and then these watches will just be faded out and no longer be manufactured. In case they like them too much, I would say the maximum will be three years and then they are going to be faded out. Don't blame me on this one if I'm wrong. I won't get any confirmation anyhow from Omega because they will probably not tell me how long they are going to sell those. So enjoy them right now and just try them. You have to try them on your wrist. Discussion about is this blue looking, need this like that or this. You have to see them in real on your wrist and only then you should wear some jeans probably and some, some yeah, sure, more summer stuff and then you will see if they match and if they look good on your wrist. Don't see anything just right now. Get your first impression, but you should try it. The second chapter belongs to the Aqua Terra World Timer. The Aqua Terra World Timer is a watch that displays major cities in different time zones and the watch displays a zone time corresponding to the city around the world. If you are very much interested in this watch, please check our video that is already online since two weeks about two other models of the Aquaterra World Timer where I do in all details explain you the watches. I will just briefly in this video go through the watch and if you need some additional information and you say oh mm -hmm, please check out the video we have already online here on watch advice on youtube now let me start the aquaterra world timer um, has a diameter of 43 millimeters 43 millimeters the thickness of the case is of 14 point 32 millimeters 14 point 32 and the so-called log to log distance, so the distance from one log end to the other log end, is 50 millimeter. This is a watch. In theory, you could wear either with the blue rubber strap that is on your screen. You can exchange it. And the watch is also sold to you with two options, with the rubber strap and the bracelet that you see on the watch right now. You get both of them when you buy the watch. I just wanted to show you this. The watch is fitted here in the video with the stainless steel bracelet. And if you're asking yourself now, is it tapering? It does. It has 21 millimeters in between the locks, 21 millimeters in between the locks. And it tapers down to 18 millimeters in the clasp. 21 to 18. There is no microlink adjustment here. Now, I do ask you to concentrate on the dial quickly. The dial is pretty interesting. In the center, you do see a titanium grade 5 dial with a world map. Topographic of the continents and new summer blue colors obtained by laser. Yep, the 24-hour scale is visible through a Transparent hazelid glass. Just looks gorgeous, I have to say. <laughs> this is a beautiful dial. I have to say. The rest of the dial is PBD. The inner side is titanium grade 5, but the outer side is PBD. Sunbrushed and gradient varnished and has a gradient summer blue color as well as all the other dials except the ultra deep. The ultra deep. The watch that you can dive the deepest with, in theory, 6,000 meters if you wanted to the watch features a different dial. So if you want to discover it, you have to stay until to the end of the video because it will be the last watch that I'm featured. So what can you do with such a dial? When wearing the watch, you do have indicated here, first of all, not the city of Paris for the time zone of Paris, but the city of Bien. Bien, this is where the Omega headquarter is. And the little arrow here points to almost 11 o'clock, saying that the indication of the central minute and the central hour end are synchronized with the 24 hour scale of the watch. And now if you want to do any readings when you are at home, for instance, the time in Tokyo here, it is 7 p.m. or 1900 New York, five o'clock in the morning 
and since it is dark, still night or already night, 1900, you can always easily read the times through the indications on the oil and on the outer side of the dial. So you do have 24 cities indicated and you can by only looking at the dial, you can always see the corresponding time in these cities. So when you are traveling, when you're traveling, the watch is also very useful because once you arrive in your destination, you just unscrew the crown, you pull it out in the first position and then you can see now that I can move the hour hand in one hour steps. This is what I'm actually doing. Let's take New York, five o'clock in the morning. So now I've been synchronizing the time with New York time, five o'clock in the morning here. And if you would travel, you would have your local time in New York indicated through the central hour and central minute hand. And through the little arrow here, you would see your own time in Europe indicated or, or uh, shown by the city of Bien, the headquarter of Omega. And you would see it is almost 11 o'clock in the morning in Central Europe. This is very easy to use, very functional and makes sense. The central second hand will not stop. That would make any sense at all because why stopping a very precise certified metas chronometer makes no sense. The watch is accurate to zero plus five seconds. As I just said it in the video about the Aquaterra watches, you will never ever get such a precise indication of time from any flight attendant in an airplane when they do announce the time. This is more or less always crap. They just say anything. Okay, you do have precise time, so there's no need for you to lose time when you do some settings. This is how you use it. I now go back to almost 11 o'clock. So we resynchronize the watch and then again you can use the watch starting from London UTC or GMT 12 o'clock. You can now go east and west to see or to discover the corresponding time in the cities indicated on the dial. The case is waterproof 150 meters as the case of the Aquaterra watches I showed in chapter one. It is a screw down crown, yes, a screw down crown that makes the operations a little bit more difficult, but I did it with gloves. And as all the other watches, it features Neptune on its back once again being displayed, nicely displayed, I have to say, on the case back. It's a screw in polished brushed wave edge design stamped uh, with a commemorative medallion engraved with a Seamaster 1948 and the water resistance. The sapphire crystal on the front side, I do repeat that, does have an anti-reflective treatment on both sides. If you are interested, the watch sells in Austria, including 20% 20, 20 VAT for 10,900 euro. And you get, as I mentioned, the watch with the rubber strap and the bracelet. So this is the deal when you are interested in buying this Aqua Terra World Time at 10,900 euro, including 20% VAT. Chapter number three of this video where we do show you the 75th anniversary watches of the Omega Seamaster is my personal favorite. It is the Seamaster 300. It's a 41 millimeter beautiful diver and there's just one little flaw. And this has nothing to do with the watch itself. It's just with the offering. Here I have to say, Omega, please. Why don't you offer this Seamaster 300 with an alternative, a canvas strap, a rubber strap, a tissue strap, a NATO strap, whatsoever. This bracelet is beautiful, no doubt, no doubt. It's a beautiful bracelet. But my personal opinion is it is not a watch that I personally would wear on a bracelet, but always, always I would want to wear this watch either on an auto, a rubber strap, or 
a canvas strap or whatsoever, just a beautifully woven tissue strap with the stitching corresponding to the colors. Why do I want this? Because for me, the bracelet makes the watch unnecessarily heavy, looking bold and heavy. And just before I start presenting you the watch, I asked Omega to also send me, look, this could be an alternative, wear it with a NATO. These are original Omega NATO straps you can buy on the website. You do have the Omega logo prominently featured here. Everything. These are beautiful. And they, yeah, this is not blue. They're just protected because they're original NATOs. And I don't take away the protection. Or think about wearing it with a deep blue NATO strap. How much cooler, how much, I don't know what, sexier this watch would look instead of having this shiny... For me, not really sexy bracelet on it. So let me now present you the watch. <laughs> cool watch. Look at this dial. How beautiful the dial is. So beautiful. Dark blue gradient into a light to blue if you go in the inner side. Beautiful. 41 millimeter is the diameter of the case. 41 millimeters. The thickness is 13. One free. 0.85 millimeters, 13.85 millimeters, and the so-called log to log distance. So that's the distance I always give you from one log end to the other log end is 48 millimeter. For those of you interested, here's the bracelet. A beautiful bracelet, I have to say, but not my cup of uh, something. Bracelet, tea, coffee, something. Yes, it does taper. It tapers down from 21 millimeter in between the lugs to 16 millimeters in the folding clasp. The beautiful folding clasp with a micro length adjustment. I will show you this. Just in a while. The front side, the front side. We are talking about a dial that is varnished, gradient summer blue, and it has two levels. So the dial features two levels. In the first, you have a summer blue super luminova applied with a blue emission. The second level is with recessed hour markers and numerals open worked. Voila. So it is kind of a sandwich construction, the dial they're using. And as you see with our loom shot, how beautiful this dial also looks at night. Very nice, I have to say. The bezel is, of course, only turning counterclockwise. This is a diver, has to be. You can only shorten the dive, but never, never, ever any extensions by, I don't know, displacing the um, little marker here on your basal. So it only turns counterclockwise, 120 clicks, nice haptic, beautifully done. When I go back to 12 o'clock, that's what I'm doing right now. Nicely centered again. The inlay is done in ceramic. So it's a ceramic inlay here. As you just saw it in the loom shot, there is no light coming from 10, 20, 30, 14, 50 and the indexes, but from the little dot at 12 o'clock, that's how it is. There's no date that makes the watch even more beautiful. And any date here, anyhow, would be difficult to read because the diameter with 41 millimeter unless you do install here a big date indication would be very little anyhow so now what i will do i will screw out the crown to show you the crown that has a nice shape look this is the shape of the crown it also perfectly can be manipulated with gloves this is because i wanted to show you this you do see the nice lollipop central second hand and the hour hand and central minute hand it is a three and a half hertz movement 25,200 semi oscillations the power reserve is 60 hours and yes of course a coaxial movement and as all the omega watches certified by metas and it is a master chronometer that watches withstanding magnetic fields up to 15,000 gauss and is almost indestructible i can say this you can maybe harm the case or scratch, but it will be very, very, very difficult to really harm that excellent 
really excellent movement. And it is the Kaliba 8912, 8912 with a silicon hairspring. But this applies to all the other Kalibers too. So they're always excellent. Since I've been on screwing the crown, there's a nice feature I can also quickly show you. It's the so-called time zone function. It is the possibility to change the hours in one hour steps without stopping the watch. And you can clearly see this, the central second hand with the lollipop is still swiping over the dial. The watch does not stop. So if you need to do adjustments when you are traveling, you can easily do this. You just unscrew, pull out the crown first position, and then you can, without stopping the watch, do your necessary adjustments forward and backward. And this is very, very useful and a nice additional feature on an anyhow very, very beautiful and very cool watch if, if Omega would offer it with a tissue strap, a NATO strap, a rubber strap, whatsoever. If you are choosing to buy the watch with the bracelet, what you find here is a micro length adjustment. So you can easily adjust the length, 3.8 millimeters, three positions. The only thing you have to do is there is a button saying ready push. So you push, then you slide back. This is what I did right now. So this is the tightest. And then you push and you open up in three positions. You just saw it. And this is here the space in between where I'm pointing with my plastic pointer that cannot scratch watches because it is made out of plastic. This is what you gain or lose depending on where you are putting this micro length adjustment. This is the middle position. To show you this is the middle position and then I go back in and this is closed. So. The folding clasp is protected by two push pieces. So you can't open it. Omega logo is nicely engraved on it. Inner links are matte. The inner links are matte and the outer links are polished. The flanks are matte. And some parts here are polished again. And this total of it causes some magnificent, beautiful, gorgeous reflections in sunlight, etc., etc. Beautiful watch, absolutely gorgeous. My favorite, the only thing, the only thing, Omega, why didn't you offer the watch with a second option of strap or bracelet? In this case, since it is ready, having a bracelet strap, you look also with, it could be so nice. When I'm holding here the rubber strap on it or Donato strap could be such a nice watch look. Much more different, just different. Okay, we can't change. That's how it is. As always, also the Diver 300 does not feature a see-through case back. But yeah, once again, you do see Neptune on the backside to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Sea Master collection of Omega. Before I give you the price of the Seamaster 300, did you probably see the reflections um, when I was handling the watch in the camera? Did you recognize all the reflections in difference uh, to the video you might have already watched about the Aquaterra World Timer and the two Aquaterra watches? I said earlier that all the watches do feature an anti-reflective treatment on both sides. I have to correct myself because I just went into the technical data of this watch because I was wondering if it is a anti-reflective treatment on both sides. The reflections were quite uh, something during the video. So I looked and whoop, uh, what did I read? No, there is an anti-reflective treatment on the inner side only being done and not on the outer side. This is why there are more reflections and this is also amplified by the boxed sapphire crystal. And you see here, it's a boxed sapphire crystal when I go over it. The anti-reflective treatment is on the inner side in this case.
And now the big question is, how much do you have to pay if you're interested in my personal superstar? But, 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 please, once again, superstar, superstar with, with alternatives with in straps, please, Omega, Woo, listen to me, make it happen. Give this watch a beautiful woven tissue strap whatsoever. Make it happen. Um, okay. The price, including uh, the also beautifully looking, but not my first choice bracelet, <laughs> is 8,000 euro, including 20% VAT in Austria. So 8,000 euro is the price for the Seamaster 300 to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Omega Seamaster that was introduced in 1948. Chapter number four of this video is the legendary Diver 300 meter with the bracelet no one likes. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently no one likes it because whenever we do a video about the watch, everybody is always criticizing the bracelet. And uh, the more it is criticized, the more I start liking it because <laughs> it's part of the watch. The same applies, of course, to the Helium Escape Wolf positioned here no one likes it they all say take it away i say no leave it it is part of the dna of the watch it is part of this watch and in case you do say again this ugly bracelet no worries the watch can be bought and worn as well on this rubber strap that comes along with so you will get both when you buy the watch. The watch has a diameter of 42 millimeter. The thickness of the diver is 13.56 millimeter. And the so-called log to log distance. So the distance from one log end to the other log end or the entire length of the watch, the same 50 millimeters. Can you already see the difference in between the Seamaster 300 and the Diver 300 on your screen right now? In case you have been watching chapter number three of our video, you saw the Seamaster 300 and there were some, you are some strong reflections coming back from the diet. Why? Because there was only an anti-reflective treatment underneath. This sapphire crystal has an anti-reflective treatment on both sides. And look, the difference is yeah, visible. So the treatment makes sense, in my humble opinion. Yeah, there is a minimal risk of some scratches that might occur when you really hit something strong on it. But I've so many watches featuring an anti-reflective treatment on both sides, and I had never any big problems with any scratches. So you can almost forget this issue. This dial has a PVD finishing, but it is a ceramic dial sunbrushed ceramic dial, laser engraved waves and ceramic gradient varnished. So everything is ceramic. What you see in there is also a little marking underneath the center showing you the letters ZRO2 for zirconium dioxide. And this is ceramic as well as the inlay in the unidirectional turning basal is in ceramic. It is a diver, so you will always see me being able to turn this um, basal counterclockwise. You cannot go in clockwise. It is impossible. So why is this feature there? Because if you are by coincidence touching your basal when you are diving, the only thing you can do is shorten your dive, but not the contrary. So you will never get in the problem of having no more air. So 120 clicks, nicely done, nicely. Also the haptic that comes back from the basal when you are turning it beautifully done. We do have on the dial besides of the central minute and central hour hand and the central second and the date indication at six o'clock with a date disc that is 100% matching the color of the dial. I've been checking it with a magnifying glass. Perfectly done, Omega. I have to say, this is how you do a watch. You really 
look at all the details. In these different shades, also a cheap watch from an excellent watch or a luxury watch or an Omega in this case. What is the movement powering this Taba 300? It's the Calibre 8800. It is a movement with a date function. There is no time zone function or the home time function. So there is no way of uh, setting the hour hand in one hour steps. So the only thing you can do is you have to stop the watch. This is not really perfect because if you're traveling, you will lose time and then you depend on the correct time source to readjust the watch. But that's how it is. Then let us quickly also have a look at the date change so you can observe if it is an instantaneous jump or not. Here is the date positioned at six o'clock. Please watch closely. We are approaching 9, 10, 11 at night. And now what will happen? We are approaching midnight. Yeah, quarter two. There is a little of a movement visible here in the date, in the date window, but almost precisely at 12 o'clock, the date has jumped to the 9th. And this is how it should be. Let me put it back to 10 o'clock in the morning so the watch smiles at you once again. And I will also quickly run you through the other numbers so you can see them. This is double digit now. And so on, we quickly go back. Now comes the 20th, even a little bit smaller, the indications. So the more <laughs> you go up, Towards the 30th and the 31st, the numbers, again, Mr. Central second hand disturbing us. Come on, man. Move. Voila. Bye. For one minute at least. So the 30th and then watch now the first, the 31st and the first. Yeah, these numbers are, of course, bigger, nicer, easier to read. Let's go back to the eight lucky numbers. So screw down crown, the case as the Seamaster 300 is waterproof up to 300 meters, this is also why the watch is called Dive of Freedom. The Helium Escape Wolf, yeah, we don't need it. I know because modern watches don't need this kind of technology anymore. It is still there. It is part of the DNA, part of the design of the watch. So please accept the fact that there is a helium escape valve on the watch. No one will use it, I think, but it is still there. And wait until Omega will present maybe second generation of that Diablo 300 and maybe then they will get rid of it. We'll see. So now let me come to the, for some of you, ugly bracelet. Some of you do also like it. I've been reading some really nice comments about the bracelet. People saying, hey, that's a cool bracelet, perfectly functioning. What's wrong with it? I think the same. I don't see any problem with it. In this case, in contrary to the Seamaster 300, the watch for me that I would never ever wear with a bracelet. But I could imagine to wear this Diva 300 with that bracelet because it is, yeah, it's not, not bad at all. First of all, there is a micro length adjustment integrated in the folding class offers you 9.6 millimeters in six different positions. Here is that push button clearly marked with push. Then what you do is you push in and then you can slide. This is maximum 9.6 millimeters. So what you see here are 9.6 millimeters and you can slide back and you gain or lose whatever you want. But, 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 there is an extra diver extension if you're really diving with the watch. So you could open it and then watch closely. Then here you click and open. And I leave it in the camera now. So you have here two times 11.7 millimeters. So one, two, plus 9.6 is a total of 33 millimeter. So this is pretty cool, I have to say. Offers you, if necessary, a quite reasonable length extension with that beautiful, or some of you thinking ugly, bracelet. Is the bracelet of the Daiwa 300 tapering? No, it is not. In between the locks, 20 millimeters in the clasp. 20 millimeters and now I can literally hear some of you screaming. 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 That's how it is. 20, 20, no discussion possible because they are given sizes. If you plan to wear it with the rubber strap that comes along, you have a tapering down from 20 to 18. We have here 20 in between the 
logs and it tapers down to 18. You can nicely also see this here. Wearing it with the folding clasp does mean that there is no micro length adjustment and the adjustments of the length, you do it here with this pin. There is a pin, you slide the rubber bracelet in Let's take this hole and then you just have to squeeze in the rubber as I did it now. And then you close here and you wear the watch. I personally, in this case, in total contrast to what I've been saying before with the Seamaster friend, and couldn't think about wearing the watch with this bracelet. It is smooth. It perfectly hugs the wrist. It does not look ugly at all, in my humble opinion. Tastes are different, this is the only thing I can say. I could very much also imagine to wear it with the rubber strap, both are possible. Anyhow, this is for me a cool watch. The design is iconic, meanwhile, the quality you get is outstanding. It is a certified master chronometer with a movement featuring a co-actual escapement. It is a three and a half hertz movement, 25,200 semi oscillations, a silicon balance spring, and the watch features a power reserve of 55 hours. In that base of a daily use, you will never ever have to wind it. But also here, you can see on the backside, perfectly, once again, perfectly aligned Neptune Seamaster since 1948 and 300 meters or 1,000 feet. No see-through case backs on these watches done for the 75th anniversary of the Omega C Master. Price-wise, price-wise, 6,700 euro. What do you think? Not bad at all, huh? 6,700 euro. Both the rubber strap and the stainless steel bracelet are part of the deal. 6,700 euro are more than fair and you get really a nice, beautifully looking, iconic diver from Omega. Just a little remark because these NATO straps are still lying here on the table and I said to myself, it would also look gorgeous to wear the watch on an NATO. It would add, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, it would add some thickness, I know. The watch, anyhow, is not thin. 13.56 millimeters would add some thickness, but still, I think it would look cool. At least me, I don't care about thick watches and how thick they look on my wrist. I'm more the kind of guy who says, is it cool or not? And I don't care if it is thick or not. So yeah, could also be nice with a nice NATO, could look nice. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Leave your comments in the comment section for this watch and all the other watches. Of course, if you're looking all the entire video, hey, thanks so much to be still there. In case you just watching this chapter of the video, please consider also watching the rest of the video. You won't be disappointed. I can tell you. Chapter number five of our video is dedicated to the planet ocean. We are diving deeper now because the planet ocean is waterproof up to 600 meters. So we had the Aquaterra watches and the Aquaterra world timer being waterproof at only, only quite enough, but only 150 meters. Then, then, then we moved on to the Diver 300 and the Seamaster 300, both Norman est Omen 300 are waterproof up to 300 meters. And the planet ocean on your screen right now, waterproof up to 600 meters. So this would, 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 would be my favorite watch, but the size of the case is just too small for me. Why would this be my favorite watch? Because in my humble opinion, this is the most beautiful, it is the beautifulest dial when we are talking about the gradient summer blue dials, because what you see here is just a stunner. I am speechless about this style, the hands, everything. Just stunning, beautiful. But 39.5 millimeters for such a bold and thick watch, no. Not for me, the size of the case is not enough. It should be more. This is 39.5 millimeter. 
The thickness of the watch is a 14.16 millimeter. You are now saying, oh, it is so thick. Yeah, imagine why. Waterproof up to 600 meter or 2000 feet. And since it is a master chronometer certified watch, it must be tested to 600 meters plus 15%. So really, the watch is challenged before it might be sold to you. This is the reason why the watch is quite thick. So the lug to lug distance is not too much, of course, uh, 45.6 millimeters. Would be a perfect or is a perfect watch for a smaller wrist, could be. I do also have smaller wrists, but I would never wear it. I don't know why. It's just something is not ideal for me, the size um, to the thickness, etc. Et I would have wished that this is a 42 or something millimeter case, a bigger one. That's how it is. Now coming back. Incredible. I just love it. The black Omega logo on it. The contrast of that beautiful blue gradient blue dial with the blue central hour and minute hand and central second hand. The deep blue color of the deep blue date disc, everything. It is just perfect, just perfect, including the ceramic inlay of the only counterclockwise turning basil of course it is a dial. so let me show you the basil turning counterclockwise as i do and did with all the other watches 120 clicks once again and yeah beautifully there is it is nice the haptics are good you really feeling that this is not cheap to manufacture this is really quality and you feel it in between your fingers when you turn the basil that this is not cheap to manufacture. Not centered it correctly. One more click. There we go. There is that little dot with green emission on it. The inlay here is enamel, but it is a ceramic inlay and with enamel. But if you look at our loom shot, you don't see the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. And of course, the scale here that is Necessary if you want to certify the watch as a die with the first 15 minutes have to be shown in all details with one hour indexes and one hour markings. So if you want to certify a watch as a die, well, this is one of the things the watch needs to fit. The watch is powered by the Calibre 8800. That's the same as the Diver 300. So what we have is, again, a Omega movement with 55 hours of power reserve, 3.5 Hz, 25,200 semi-oscillations. Yes, hacking seconds, of course. Yes, if you pull out the crown in the second position. But there is no home time function. So there is no function where you could pull out the crown in the first position and then manipulate the hour end in one hour steps. This is not possible. You will have to, when you travel, stop the watch, find the correct time signal again, do your settings as I'm doing it right now. Do your settings and then find uh, yeah, a time signal. Do not uh, believe what the flight attendants tell you in an airplane. <laughs> this is mostly wrong, but never mind. You find your time signal, use your smartphone whatsoever, then you have to readjust the watch. That's a little bit of a pity because you get a perfectly adjusted watch, you know, a Meta certified watch of Omega is precise from zero to plus five seconds a day. That's incredible. Couldn't be better. But it's a pity when you travel and then you have to stop your watch. You then have a screw down crown, of course, and I will screw in the crown. The haptic of the crown, even with gloves, is perfect because I can easily do it. The Helium Escape Valve is something no one needs but is part of the DNA of the watch so please do not criticize it because it is part of the DNA. It's the same with these, sorry if I do say this, ugly cyclops on the dial. I do not like them at all. I do have a submariner where I took it off since these cyclops are only clued on it then you can take them off. And I simply don't like them. And it's the same with the Alien Escape Valve. Some of you don't like it, but yeah, it's part of the DNA of the watch as the two clubs are with the other brand with the crown on the dial. 
Okay, the watch comes with a very massive, massive stainless steel bracelet. Very massively done. Nicely hugging the wrist, looking good on it because anyhow, the entire watch is quite thick. And if you're looking here a little bit and you see some scratches, these scratches are not because I have been mishandling these watches or not handling them correctly, these scratches are there because all the watches I am showing you are not for sale. They are watches coming from an Omega collection that is traveling around the world or through Europe, is shown to the retailers, to VIPs, customers, and some journalists as me. This is why there are some scratches on the watch already. And of course, yes, when you buy a watch from Omega, there won't be any scratches there, of course. Everything will be new, of course. <laughs> Just in case you wonder. Let me also mention that there is a micro length adjustment being integrated in the bracelet. You see here a push piece where there's written push. What you do is you push on it and there are three adjustable positions. This is a total of 3.8 millimeters. I will show you this. So this is open. Here are these 3.8 millimeters. And this is the micro length adjustment you have. There is our three positions. Half of it, you see. It's closed and you have three positions, a total of 3.8 millimeters. Is the sapphire crystal featuring a anti-reflective treatment on both sides? Yes or no? What do you think? Just think about the reflections. There aren't any. Yes, there is an anti-reflective treatment also on the outer side. There is no, 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 no see-through case pack, but once again, the perfectly Aligned massive case pack featuring Neptune on it with the engraving Seamaster since 1948 and 600 meters and 2000 feet. And this applies to all the watches, just in case you're only watching this chapter of our video. All the other watches do also not feature a seafood case pack, but this beautifully stamped commemorative medallion with Neptune. Price-wise, price-wise. 8,000 euro including 20% VAT. Here in Austria, this is the price for the Seamaster Planet Ocean that, in my humble opinion, features the beautiful style for my personal taste. I like this combination of these dark blue hands combined with this beautiful it's a vertically diamond brushed. It's a ceramic dial, PVD coated, oh. gradient varnished. It's beautiful. And you do see here, it is written ZRO2, zirconium dioxide. This shows that it is a ceramic dial. Thank you very much for watching chapter five of our little presentation with the Planet Ocean waterproof up to 600 meters. What do you think? Do you agree with me concerning size and thickness? 39.5 millimeters, it could be a little bit more. Or do you say, no, no, that's perfect, uh, looking good. Uh, I don't mind, even if it's a little bit thick uh, on top. Okay, we can discuss this in the comment section, but I'm happy already now, happy, very happy to read your comments about the planet ocean. <laughs>
when I turn off the light, the secret signature disappears and it is only black. But once you use such a light, it will also make all the other superluminova filled indexes, hands, etc. shine. You will anyhow see also a loom shot of the watch, but here you can see this hidden signature. I wanted to show it to you. Okay, this is something incredible. Looks like a watch that is not made for human being, but for, I don't know, people who live in the deep seas. <laughs> okay, a beautiful watch, quite big, quite thick, an extreme watch. Everything we can talk about is extreme with this watch. I want to show you some of the details of it. Case diameter 45.6 millimeter, 45.6 millimeter. Thickness of the case 18.12 millimeter, 18.12 millimeter. And the so called log to log distance, so the distance from one log end to the other length or the entire length of the watch is. 51.95 millimeter, almost 52 millimeters length of the watch. Why is this so big and thick? Yeah, of course, it is waterproof up to 6,000 meter or 20,000 feet. 6,000 meter or 20,000 feet. Quite extreme for a diver. It is also built to really be a diver that can be used in professional surroundings, so it conforms to the requirements of the ESO 6425 2018 standard for saturation divers watches. So this is really a professional instrument. This is not a watch to show off. In a bar, you can. Mm -hmm. You always can talk about, yeah, maybe I've been down there in the deepest waters with the watch, blah, blah. You can do everything after some drinks. But, but, but the main purpose of the watch is to be a professional instrument for divers who need such a watch. And they don't care if it is thick or big or whatsoever. They only claim that it must be robust. It must withstand everything. Shucks thermical, everything. It must withstand everything that can happen underwater because you do rely on your watch when you dive or do extreme dives, saturation dives, if you are working underwater. You need such an instrument as a reference, as a security, and you want such a watch so you don't care if it is thick or not or blah, blah, blah. Readability must be excellent. It is. It is a dark blue dial, but you can see some shades of the ground of the ocean. The contrast couldn't be better in between that dark surface and the hour and minute hand, etc. with this beautiful over the dial swiping central second hand with that white point. So you will always at one look see if the watch is working or not. That is essential information if you're using it. And at night, if it is dark, you will also have here a super luminova spot Nice, I would say. Nice, 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 nice. A professional instrument, of course, will only feature a basal that turns counterclockwise. That's how it should be. And uh, the haptics are phenomenal. It's a really, really, really perfect Swiss engineering what you have here. That's a watch that is a superlative, a real superlative, and probably one of the most reliable divers you can get on the market if you really are into diving. I would wear the watch as my security, and I would give a shit, forgive me this expression, but I wouldn't care about any remarks about, it's so fake, it's this, it doesn't go on your wrist. I wouldn't care, I would wear it. Okay, now I said it. Of course, the bracelet must be thick as well because you want the watch to stay on your wrist once it is there. But now, of course, there is several length extensions available in the folding class. First of all, there's a button with the word push on it. So you can, in six positions, gain 9.7 millimeters. I will show you. I will open it. Okay, this are the first 9.7 millimeters if you want. Six positions, so you can, of course, do less if you want. 
now it's less and so on. But now comes a extra diver extension with two times 11.8 millimeters, two times 11.8 millimeters. The only thing you need to do is you need to open it. And then you see here, click, there is a click and now you extend. And in total, you have gained 33.3 millimeters, 33.3 millimeters. And this should be quite enough to also wear the watch if you are wearing it with a quite thick diving suit. Should be enough, I would say, should be enough. And once you have it on your wrist, you can do some adjustments. Look here, you just pull in, push in, and then there will be one position where this Extreme watch will perfectly sit on your wrist and you will enjoy diving with it, I would say. Of course, two push pieces will prevent that this clasp opens up by mistake. Let me show you something that is also very useful because I expect if you are diving, you will not dive in our region. So you could in, in lakes in Austria, Switzerland, you could. But, but, but people will travel and I will make it smile. But look. Pull out the crown in the last position. Yes, hacking seconds. The central second hand stopped. It's the Kaliber 8912. Omega Kaliber 8912. Three and a half hertz. 25,200 semi-oscillation. 60 hours of power reserve. But no comes noise thing. And this is the home time function or time zone function. Whatever you want to call it. And you can adjust the hour end in one hour steps. And this is very useful. I've been saying this before in the video a couple of times. If you are traveling and you want to reset the time in your new uh, destination where you have been arriving and you need to reset the watch, the central second hand will not stop. You will not lose the time. And this, of course, is a master chronometer certified watch precise to 0 0.5 plus five seconds. So you are wearing a precise watch that indicates time correctly so there's no need to lose time this would happen if this function would not be there you would have to pull out the crowd in second position the central second hand would stop and you would have lost your current time but not with this watch press position and you can do your adjustments and you do not lose time very useful function very nice and of course must be part of such a terrific diver This is no exception of the rule. None of the watches that were made for the anniversary do feature a see-through case pack. The Ultra Deep anyhow couldn't feature one because it is uh, <laughs> essential to have a very, very, very robust case pack on a watch that is waterproof up to 6,000 meters. And you do also see a slight difference here. You do again see Neptune, but it is a laser application that makes Neptune appear on this watch. You do see more information on it. Perfectly done. The entire watch is manufactured out of the new Omega Steel. Omega Steel, that's a specific, very white steel and a steel that is not as easy to scratch as normal steel so it's a quite hard steel but it is a particular steel and a very white steel so the entire watch is made out of omega steel including of course the case pack with neptune on it nicely done with that little secret on the dial this is the most extreme watch. If you are interested in buying the Planet Ocean Ultra Deep, it is sold for 14,000 euro, 14,000 euro, including 20% VAT here in Austria. There they are, all those cool watches to celebrate that anniversary. I have to say, I would also, after showing you all of them, still think that for me this is still my favorite so no doubt huh? this is my favorite this watch is so cool the seamaster 300 just all i want a diver no date a sandwich dial everything there but the bracelet on this watch is not my cup of tea coffee or whatsoever
Guys, thank you very much for watching a very long video, just in case you watched all the video. In case you were just jumping around, um, watching some of the chapters, fine for us. You know that there is all the rest available for you in case you still want to watch it. We do not have the ProBroth. Omega didn't provide me the ProBroth for this uh, video, so I can't show it to you. My apologies. But still, I think you were able to see all the other watches, including the Ultra Deep waterproof up to 6,000 meters or 20,000 feet. Now, please, after watching the video, use the comment section as much as you can. Share your thoughts with us and let me know, let us know, let the community, the Watch Advisor community know what you think about these watches. Do recommend our channel. Of course, I'm happy if you do this. And uh, don't forget also to subscribe if you want on our Instagram account. Help us to grow this channel as well. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon back here on Watch Advisor on YouTube. Hi.